Hi, and welcome to this session about getting started with AGO using Raspberry Pi. It is a pleasure to be here with you at AGO All Members Meeting. Before we proceed, huge thanks to the whole team at Linux Foundation for organizing this virtual event. My name is Leona Navi, and I'm a senior software engineer at Consulco Group. This is a services company specializing in embedded Linux and open source software. My colleagues and I have experience in software and hardware build, design, development, and training services, as well as upstream contributions to various popular open source projects, including automotive grade Linux. Consulco Group is based in San Jose, California, with engineering presence worldwide and working remotely from Plovdiv, Bulgaria. Consulco Group has customers from various fields, including a lot of customers from the automotive industry. We have successful experience in development for conventional vehicles as well as for flying cars. The agenda for the next 25-30 minutes is a brief history of AGO on Raspberry Pi, the exact steps how to build an AGO demo image for Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, an overview of AGO specific features and configurations for this hardware platform. Finally, conclusions, questions and answers. Keep in mind that this talk is appropriate for beginners. No previous experience with the platform is required. Hopefully, the presentation will address some of the frequently asked questions by newcomers to the AGO community. A couple of weeks ago, I delivered um, a similar talk about AGO on Raspberry Pi during a Better Linux conference. However, today uh, I'm going to approach the topic from a different perspective by sharing more technical details uh, and code reviews. So, Raspberry Pi is a series of small single board computers developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The project started more than a decade ago in 2009. The first Raspberry Pi version was released in 2012. All models of Raspberry Pi feature a Broadcom system on a chip and an ARM CPU. The latest model as of today is a Raspberry Pi 4, which is supported by AGL. Although Raspberry Pi was initially designed to promote teaching of basic computer science for children, it became super popular in the maker community for hobby projects as well as for various different demonstrations. And actually the purpose of Raspberry Pi in AGL is to provide a low-cost platform uh, with which people can easily get started with AGL and use it for demonstrations. Of course, Raspberry Pi has a constrained hardware which is not, uh, compa uh, not uh, competitive to Renaissance or other automotive-grade boards, but it's still a good choice for demonstrations. The first uh, Raspberry Pi version supported by AGL released Brilliant Blowfish was Raspberry Pi 2. Here are the milestones of Raspberry Pi support in AGL. Everything started five years ago in 2015 well, when Mauro Chenna, who at that time was working for Samsung Open Source Group, ported Tizen based on Yocto and Open Embedded for Raspberry Pi 2. And five years ago, AGL and Tizen had a lot of com common, especially with the Tizen IVI profile. Shortly after that, I was the one uh, who enabled AGL for Raspberry Pi 2. This happened in 2016. In the same year, also Geneva Development Platform was uh, ported uh, to Raspberry Pi 2. After that, with each new release of um, a version of a Raspberry Pi by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, we tried to support it in uh, AGL. In 2016, we added support for Raspberry Pi 3 and last year, in 2019, we started supporting Raspberry Pi 4, which as of today is the recommended platform among all Raspberry Pi versions to try out AGL. Let's have a look at the, this high-level diagram with the AGL core technologies. AGL, after all, is a Linux distribution. It's not that different from the uh, Linux distributions that we run on our desktop and laptop uh, personal computers. However, there are some significant differences, uh, small differences, because there are some automotive specific components. Uh, so the base layer is the bootloader and the Linux kernel. AGL runs on uh, various different devices. So there is a board support package layer that provides um, a Linux kernel and bootloader appropriate for the uh, hardware platform if uh, mainline Linux is not supported. Systemd is the uh, uh, init system. Pipewire is looking after the audio. Uh, AGL has uh, implementation of software over the air updates using OS3 uh, 
also known as libos tree and actualizer also another specific thing for the agl is the security model which is part of the whole distribution it's provided with smack that has to be enabled in the linux kernel with the application framework and synagora for managing permissions of the applications the graphical user stack of agl is based on wayland wayland um, is a display protocol that um, has some uh, benefits in, uh, uh, and advantages compared to x11 uh, Wayland is adopted in the automotive industry, but it is also used uh, in modern smart TVs by Samsung and LG, also even in smart watches. Uh, Weston is the reference um, compositor of Wayland. It's part also part of AGL. Uh, for a long time, Weston was running with the IVI shell, but at the moment, efforts to support AGL shell desktop are going on. Um, so yeah, these are some specific things for AGL. Uh, Wayland and Weston with this uh, new shell, the software over the air updates, the Pipewire, Pipewire audio framework, which has some advantages over using Pulse Audio and also for automotive use cases. And on top, on top of all this, if you build a demo image, you get some demo applications. Uh, for AGL, there are Qt and QML uh, HMI demo applications, as well as HTML5 demo applications. In order to build this whole distribution from scratch, um, the automotive grade Linux uh, relies on the Yocto project. Uh, this is an open source collaborative project of the Linux Foundation for creating custom Linux based system for embedded devices using the open embedded build system that provides BitBake and open embedded core. Uh, Pocky is the reference distribution provided by the Yocto project. It comes as a metadata, no binary files are included in Pocky. The idea is to bootstrap your own distribution for embedded device um, and um, to save some efforts because you can grab Pocky and start building on top of it. The Yocto project has a B annual release cycle just like AGL. This is the list of Yocto and open embedded layers that we have in AGL. It's a long list. As I told you, AGL is based on Pocky. It adds a lot of uh, AGL specific layers. All of them start with prefix. Uh, meta dash AGL. There, uh, there is also Meta Open Embedded, probably the most popular um, uh, layer if you are using Yocto or Open Embedded. It's a collection of sub layers such as uh, Meta OE, Meta Networking, Meta Multimedia, Meta Python, and so on. Furthermore, we have BSP layers. Uh, most importantly, for Raspberry Pi, we have Meta Raspberry Pi but AGL works on a lot of different hardware devices. Therefore, we have a lot of different BSP layers such as Meta Intel, Meta TI, Meta Renaissance, and so on. Twice per year, there is a new release of AGL. Releases are named on fishes. The latest stable uh, release as of the moment is it's the ice fish, but in the pipeline, a new release uh, candidate is coming. More details are available at the AGL wiki. So let's have a look at the exact steps how to build uh, a demo image of AGL for Raspberry Pi. Um, I'll be using Raspberry Pi 4 for, um, for these steps. The first step is something that you need to do only once and it's to prepare the Google Repo 2. Um, Google Repo 2 was um, developed for Android. The idea is that in a manifest file, it, uh, um, it has a collection of uh, several Git repositories and for each meta layer that you saw in the previous slide, there is a separate Git repository. So the repo tool helps us to manage them. The first step, the preparation of the repo tool is a step that you have to do only once. After that, you need to initialize the repo and to execute repo sync to download um, all these Git repositories uh, to clone them on your build machine. So keep in mind that the idea here is to run all these steps on a powerful x86-64 build machine uh, with um, appropriate GNU Linux distribution uh, for the Dunfeld release of, uh, of the Yocto project. For example, I'm using Ubuntu 18.4. Uh, the Yocto project has a number of other recommended Linux distributions. If you are not uh, having um, a recommended Linux distribution, to avoid any issues, I highly recommend you to set up a container and to the, do the build there. Um, please note that here I'm initializing AGL Master. Uh, Master is pretty much the latest and greatest 
AGO version. However, it's not stable. So if you need uh, to uh, build an uh, image for a stable distribution and ba base your development on it, uh, instead of master, uh, use another branch or the master manifest with an appropriate manifest for the version that you're targeting. The next step is to set up the build environment using the AGO setup script and specifying Raspberry Pi 4 as a machine and a list of Raspberry Pi features that I want to enable. Uh, it's going to be a very basic demo image. Therefore, I'm only specifying AGO demo and AGO application framework SMAC uh, features. Finally, I'm launching the build process with Bitbake. Bitbake is the tool to make our image AGO demo platform is the most commonly used image, but there are a lot of other images supported. The build from scratch takes a significant amount of time, depending on your internet connection, because Bitbake has to download the source code of, um, for each recipe and after that to build it and to package it. Um, also, the build time depends on the hardware capabilities of your build machine. Um, so depending on these two things, a build from scratch can take uh, really even hours. Uh, it's recommended, of course, to use um, more powerful machines. This will cut the build time. Keep in mind that uh, this significant amount of time is only for the first build. After that, the Octo Project and Open Embedded allows you to reuse the downloads and the shared state and to do incremental builds, which can be uh, really very fast. Um, if you are new to the Yocto Project ecosystem, uh, keep in mind that uh, Yocto and Open Embedded have a very steep learning curve. It's, uh, it, it takes some time to get used to them, but once you get used to them, you will know why the Yocto project and Open Embedded are the best and most convenient tools as of today to build custom GNU Linux distributions. Um, let's have a closer look at some of the AGO features and supported Raspberry Pi models as of today. AGO supports two Raspberry Pi versions, Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi 3 has a constrained hardware capabilities and most probably in the long term, uh, the AGL support for it will be deprecated. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 support has been already deprecated. Uh, the recommended as of today, Raspberry Pi model and version to build AGL 4 is Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and it's highly recommended to use a Raspberry Pi 4 with either 4 or 8 gigabytes RAM. The more RAM, the better. Um, here are some of the AGL features, AGL demo. AGI application framework SMAC, uh, this, this is for the security, AGI SOTA for the software over the air updates, uh, AGI netboot for uh, network boot. And if you run the AGI setup with an argument for help, you see a very long list of all supported uh, machines. And AGI actually runs on a lot of different machines and a lot of different hardware, as well as a long list of AGI features with a brief description about each feature. Once uh, you have built an image, you need to flash it on a micro SD card. The image that we built for Raspberry Pi 4 is 64 bits. Um, and we need to flash it on a micro SD card either using DD from a command line, or if you're not feeling uh, very comfortable in the command line, you can uh, use um, an application with graphical user interface such as Balena Etcher. Once you flash the, the image on a micro SD card, plug it. Uh, on the Raspberry, in the Raspberry Pi and turn on the board. The first boot of AGO takes a little bit longer because AGO performs some installation, uh, installations of applications on the first boot. After that, each next boot uh, is um, way faster than the first boot. Uh, common AGO images, we built, it, uh, we built an AGO demo platform in the previous slide. However, there is a base image for IVI targets. There is a cluster demo image. There is a very minimal image, just enough to boot. There is a minimal file system image with AGO APIs. And there is also a minimal image with uh, uh, Wayland and Weston. Um, as I told you, uh, during the first boot, uh, the first boot might be a little bit longer. So it's highly recommended to connect the USB to UART uh, cable. This way you connect the Raspberry Pi to your computer and you'll be able to monitor the serial output. Uh, using applications such as Screen or Minicom if you are a Linux uh, user. Uh, there are three dedicated UR pins on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, these are pins 6, 8 and, and 10. Connect RX of uh, the cable to TX on the board and TX on the cable to RX on the board. This is how uh, UART works. You have to cross RX and TX. 
uh, the serial bolt rate is 150 200 and this is a sample um, serial output uh, from AGL demo uh, platform image uh, booted on a Raspberry Pi uh, login with user root no um, password is required here are a few screenshots of AGL uh, demo applications running on Raspberry Pi 4 on the left is the home screen with all uh, present demo applications in the middle we have a screenshot of the HVAC application and on the right there is a screenshot of the settings application of AGL. Um, as you have already noticed, AGL is running in uh, portrait mode. So um, uh, let's have um, a look at uh, some hints how to do troubleshooting. If for some reason or another you have changed something and you're not seeing anything coming on the screen, the first thing that you need to check is if Western is running. As I told you, AGL is using systemd, so you can type in systemd uh, system control status Western to figure out the display of uh, uh, to figure out the status of the Western display service. Um, in this particular case, Western is uh, is active. It is running, so everything is fine. Um, also, you can have a look at the logs generated by Western, and if there is something wrong, you you can figure it out by debugging uh, the Western log. The supported Raspberry Pi peripherals in AGL are HDMI monitors. Keep in mind that although Raspberry Pi 4 has support for two monitors, I haven't tried this and I don't think that out of the box uh, two monitors will work. Uh, it's recommended just to attach one HDMI monitor to a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, also, the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen display uh, is supported. It's a display that connects to the, to the uh, DSi connector on the Raspberry Pi, uh, the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work, and also various third-party add-on boards and hats are supported. Hats uh, is a standard by the Raspberry Pi Foundation for hardware attached on top. It has uh, some requirements for these boards, such as mechanical, mechanical dimensions and uh, EE prom uh, connected uh, with the um, connected to the secondary I2C interface of the Raspberry Pi. This EEPROM connects, uh, uh, contains a device tree binary overlay with uh, um, software description of the hardware. The Octo project has a release twice per year. This is the list of the recent releases. Dunfout is the latest stable release. It was released in April and as of the moment AGM Master is based on Dunfout. Uh, this is a code snippet from the uh, default manifest uh, used by the repo tool for the Yocto project. And as you can see, um, it is uh, using Pocky and all other layers based on Dunfeld. Uh, so if for one reason or another, you don't want to use the default manifest, and the most common reason is that you want to target a specific AGL release that is known to be stable, you should specify a different manifest. Here is a short list of some of the manifests for the particular previous releases such as Icefish, Hollywood, Goopy and so on. Meta Raspberry Pi is a general Yocto and Open embedded board support package layer for Raspberry Pi boards. It is used in AGL as well as in any other GNU Linux distribution based on Open Embedded or Yocto uh, that supports Raspberry Pi. Uh, Meta Raspberry Pi depends on layers from Meta Open Embedded, Meta OE, Meta Multimedia, Meta Networking, Meta Python. All of these are present in uh, AGL. So this BSP provides some very specific variables for Raspberry Pi as uh, knobs to enable um, or disable hardware specific features. For example, to enable or to disable the I2C, the SPI bus. In AGL, we use U-Boot for Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this variable AirPi use U-Boot is really important for us. Also, the serial output that we've discussed previously has to be enabled and out of the box it's enabled on AGL using the variable enable UART. Another important thing for AGL is the variable VC4DTBO, which must be set to VC4FKMS V3D. Uh, we need this to support Wayland, Western, and the apps on both HDMI monitor and the official Raspberry Pi uh, 7 inch touchscreen display. Meta Raspberry Pi. Uh, is uh, hosted on several locations, but uh, if you want to submit a new feature or a bug fix, you should do it as a GitHub pull request. 
The layer is maintained by Andrei Gerzan. There are more than 19 contributors, uh, including me. Uh, I have to say this is one of my favorite or probably my favorite uh, BSP layer uh, in the Yocto and Open Embedded um, ecosystem. It is very well maintained. Andre is doing a great job uh, and it maintains uh, all models and versions of Raspberry Pi. Documentation for Meta Raspberry Pi is available at readthedocs.org. In AGL script, AGL setup, when uh, it's uh, uh, used with a machine targeted like Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, initializes the build environment and creates files conf slash local.conf and conf slash bblayers.conf. Both of these files are standard for uh, making a build with Bitbake. Uh, in bblayers.conf is, 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 is the whole list of uh, layers required to build an image from AGL image from scratch. Um, so, um, Yocto Open Embedded Layer Meta AGO slash Meta AGO BSP contains a lot of sub layers with uh, specific AGO hardware configurations for each supported platform. There we have Meta AGO um, BSP for Raspberry Pi as well. So, depending on the targeted machine, um, AGO setup script includes either uh, uh, conf slash includes uh, slash AGO underscore Raspberry Pi 4. Or three depending on the machine in our case we uh, specified Raspberry Pi 4 so the Raspberry Pi 4 ink file will be included it provides these specific uh, configurations for uh, Raspberry Pi in AGL for example if, uh, to, to enable the UART out of the box um, so uh, AGL on Raspberry Pi the specific things is that AGL uses U-boot as a boot loader on Raspberry Pi the GPU memory is set to um, 256 megabytes. Raspberry Pi is um, in general kind of constrained in terms of uh, hardware capabilities platform. It is not competitive to automotive grade boards such as the ones uh, manufactured by Renaissance. So it's highly recommended to use a Raspberry Pi with uh, a lot of RAM, for example, Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigabytes of RAM or four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, on Raspberry Pi 3, this is kind of a problem. Uh, UART is enabled out of the box. Uh, out of the box, um, AGO includes uh, specific uh, Linux kernel modules as well as Wi Fi and Bluetooth firmware uh, binary files for Raspberry Pi. Important bit to support AGO on Raspberry Pi is the firmware KMS. Uh, this is the trick um, to support both the HDMI monitor and the 7 inch official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. Um, we need to use firmware KMS instead of full KMS. Uh, with the firmware KMS, we also need to use appropriate Linux kernel version, MESA with VC4 support and binary firmware. Um, back in the autumn of 2019, we had a lot of problems because the HMI monitors were working fine. However, the official Raspberry Pi touch screen display connected to the DSi port on the Raspberry Pi was not. And after a long research, Finally, the fix was to switch from full KMS to firmware KMS through this variable VC4DTBIO, which should be set to the specific value. This way, the device tree overlay is loaded in config.txt file while building AGO for Raspberry Pi. Uh, nowadays, all these things are working, and actually, in Meta Raspberry Pi, also by default. Um, has switched to firmware KMS, so things are nowadays a little bit easier compared to what we had to deal with um, six or seven months ago. Software over the air updates are enabled with the AGL sort of feature. Uh, it uses LibOS3 and Actualizer, which provide a Git like model for committing, downloading, and, and automated provisioning of bootable file system trees to a fleet of vehicles. The advantage here is, uh, especially for the automotive industry, is that the vehicle is moving and instead of downloading a whole AB update, which um, uh, requires a lot, of, a lot of data to be transferred, uh, with LibOS3, only a binary delta, only a binary diff is downloaded to the image. Uh, this is implemented through the integration of Meta Updater and Meta Updater Raspberry Pi layers. Um, I'm really proud that I was involved uh, in the early efforts to adopt these technologies in AGL. This was done by a German company called ATS Advanced Telematic Systems. 
uh, which was later on acquired by HERE and as an engineer at Kosuku Group under a contract with ATS, I was working on this. More details about software over the air updates in AGO are available in the AGO wiki with some use cases as well as uh, the official documentation um, provided by uh, here. The cool thing is that both LibOS3 and Actualizer are free and open source software so on the embedded devices we have uh, um, entirely open source solution for software over the air updates. Um, so if you are interested in contributing to AGO and I really hope that more people will join the community, here are the developer tools that we use every day. Um, the source code for AGO is hosted in Git repositories. We use the Google repo uh, for having these manifests uh, with um, the combination of all, uh, of all Yocto and Open Embedded layers. Uh, Garrett is the code review system. Also, AGO uses GitHub. The documentation is in the Automotive Grade Linux organization in GitHub. For bug tracking, uh, Jira is, uh, is being used. There is a wiki at wiki.automotivelinux.org and uh, the documentation is available at docs.automotivelinux.org. Um, for continuous integration, AGO is using Jenkins with Lava and Fuego for running test, tests. Um, here, here are a couple of screenshots from AGO Jira. In AGO Jira, if you find a, if you find a bug on a Raspberry Pi while, while you're testing or doing something, uh, with AGO on it, you have to report it in Jira and we can specify the platform. As you can see, Jira uh, allows you to specify either Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 or um, both of them. You can, after that, also search for existing issues. The workflow for contributing to AGO is um, quite straightforward once you get used to it. First, you need to report the, the, the issue, the, the, book, the, the book or the, the, new, the new feature request in Jira. After that, to modify the source code in order to implement it, then to include a reference to the Jira issue in the git commit message and that you're going to contribute to the um, uh, to AGO uh, Garrett. The workflow with Garrett is the following. So uh, the developer pulls the AGO, uh, Gero, uh, a AGO repository locally on his machine, makes changes, and after that pushes back his changes to Garrett, where the maintainer reviews them. If uh, the maintainer approves them, uh, the maintainer has to submit them to the uh, upstream of the AGO repo. If not, uh, he must provide feedback to, to the developer how to uh, make modifications and to fix uh, his uh, git um, commits. Here is an example for a merge change in AGO Garrett. This is actually, um, this is actually a git commit that did the switch from full KMS to firmware KMS in order to support both HDMI monitors and the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. Uh, we've already discussed this in a lot of detail, so I wanted to show you here how we have bug dash agl and a reference to uh, to the jira issue so if you open this in your web browser you can just click it and jira will be loaded and you'll be able to see the whole discussion with more details about uh, this particular change if you have any questions regarding agl please join the agl mailing list and um, send an email or if it's a quick question you can join uh, the automotive channel uh, RC channel on Freenode. I'm there almost every day. Um, there is a weekly developer, developer call that um, Walt Miner is doing. It's every Tuesday. You can also join it. Uh, we're using Zoom. And finally, it's time to wrap up the presentation with some conclusions. So, uh, AGI runs on Raspberry Pi. Of course, this is a constraint hardware. So it's not the best platform for running Raspberry Pi, but it's a great way to get started with AGL and to do some proof of concept demonstrations. Uh, it is highly recommended as of today to use uh, Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with four or eight gigabytes of RAM to successfully uh, run AGL. And I hope that more and more people will join the AGL community by contributing big fixes at um, new features, help with the testing, or uh, updating the documentation of the project. Thank you very much. Uh, here are a few, a few useful links. And one more thing, uh, if you just want to give a try of AGO on a Raspberry Pi or another of the supported hardware platforms, you can download a pre-built image. It's available 
uh, a link is available here uh, on the last line of the slide. Uh, you, you can just download an image, flush it on the micro SD card and uh, boot it on your Raspberry Pi. Thank you very much for your attention. Please let me know if you have any questions.